I still don't think this is the place for you. This place belongs in a museum. How much did you say they wanted? 40 grand, and it's gonna take that much to bring it up to code. Donnie, I love you and I, I'd hate to deny you all that extra commission, but this is what I want, warts and all. Okay, I'll get the papers. Lord, let this be a place where friends can gather, a place of respite, a place of healing, a place where change happens. And let everyone who comes in this place find peace. already and still no sign of her. The dinner crowd will be coming in before you know it and I'll be taking care of it all. After 20 years, she ought to know to be here by four. Hey, Auntie Jean. Well, hello, Stanley. What can I do for you? As if I didn't already know. Ah, uh, you know me better than I know myself. Carol, Stanley's here. I know your bacon and mayo sandwiches are gonna be the death of you one day. And I know that when they are, your wife's gonna have me brought up on murder charges. <laughs> I'll tell you like I tell my Myra. I'm in tip-top shape. Doc Simmons says so, and if he didn't, I wouldn't still be wearing this uniform. So, what are you doing down this way? I figured Myra would have you tied up with the carnival. I came down here for a well-deserved break. I've been hanging lights all afternoon. Every year they seem to add a few more lights to the bunch. It's starting to look like Las Vegas instead of Cave City. I've been putting together that nativity scene we have every year, you know. Yep, I know the one. Wouldn't be Christmas in Cave City without it. No. Well, I got it out, plugged into baby Jesus. He wouldn't, he wouldn't light up. All he'd do is flash on, flash off. Then I got one of the Wise man, his head fell off. And here comes Ms. Brinks hollering. <laughs> you know this is a very important thing to the Christmas tradition. Tradition is pretty much law in Cave City. You don't go fixing what ain't broke. Then when I thought I was just about done, here comes my Myra and the mayor. I know, I know, Auntie Jean. I'm sorry. I had choir practice. We had to get in one last rehearsal before the Christmas pageant tonight. I don't think I'm going to be able to remember all those dance steps, but I'm trying. Hey, Stanley, your wife's looking for you. She said something about the wise man's head falling off uh. again. I thought she was kidding, but Mrs. Briggs threatened to call 911 if you didn't get over there and fix it. That's why I got you to go, Cup Stanley. Sadie, I wish you best of luck tonight. You guys sound great. They better after all those rehearsals they've had. Sadie's missed work 
almost every day this week. I know, but they've added fancy lights and dance steps. I even have a solo. Stanley Wayne Grigsby, what are you doing in here? You're hiding, aren't you? The wise man's head fell off again. That baby Jesus still blinking like a road sign, and now one of the shepherds won't stand up straight. Mrs. Brinks was having such a fit that she called the sheriff's department. They sent John Higgins down there to try to fix it. You know, he got his legs all wrapped up in the cords, and he's waiting there for you to come cut him loose. Uh, I just came in here to get out of the cold. Uh, I'll be there in a minute. Myra, where is that husband of yours? Oh, there you are. You're not hiding, are you? You have work to do. Yes, Mrs. Brinks. As chairwoman of the Christmas pageant and carnival in Cave City, I am responsible to see that everything is perfect. Now, what will happen when the little children come to see that sweet baby Jesus? And there he is blinking like a traffic light. Not to mention the wise man whose head keeps falling off. I'm putting my trust in you to fix this matter, Stanley Grigsby. I'll, I'll take care of it, Miss Briggs. The time is of the essence. And Stanley, when you finish that, Mayor Riggs may need your help hanging the gold bells from the street lights. And if you take one more bite of that sandwich, so help me, I'll murder you before that bacon and mayo can. Grigsby, come quick. Just now I was hanging one of those gold bells and I lost my grip. Mrs. Brinks happened to be walking under me and now she's trapped under a giant gold bell. Is she hurt? No, but she's hollering up a storm. Please, come on. Sadie, Jean. I hope she's all right. I'm sure she is. I'm convinced that woman's made of nails. She's always been so busy looking down at other folks that I'm not surprised she didn't see that bell coming at her. Maybe it meant she knock her clean off her high horse. I've known Caroline Branks for nearly 65 years and every Christmas she gets a little worse. Have you heard the weather report? I've heard. Looks like it's starting to fall. I hope the snow doesn't keep people from coming to the Christmas carnival. Those weather people just want to scare everybody into tuning in. Every time I turn on the radio, they're changing what they just said 10 minutes ago. I got my own forecast system here in my bones. That ache I get in my bad knee is as reliable as all that fancy equipment. And by the way it's been grabbing at me today, <laughs> I'd say we're looking at a couple of feet. I do love a white Christmas. Every year I get so excited, just like when I was a little girl. Oh, Auntie Jean, there's something so magical about Christmas time, especially in Cave City. Well, I don't know about magic, but I have to admit, it is my favorite time of the year. Oh, by the way, I need to get out of here early, remember? I want to go wash my hair before tonight. The Lord don't care none if your hair's clean or dirty. Auntie Jean, I know that. But tonight is when they're going to dedicate the new gymnasium at the high school, and everybody who's ever gone to Cave City High has been invited back. And I don't want to run into anybody looking like I've got a wet possum lying across my head. Well, I don't expect we'll have much business today. Folks is too busy getting ready for the shindig. Auntie Jean, it's not a shindig. It's going to be very classy and fine. First, the children will perform the story of the birth of Jesus, just like they do every year. Then the choir will sing, and then the mayor's going to give a speech. And after that, all the alumni will be invited back for the ribbon cutting ceremony at the new gym. And then tomorrow is the start of the carnival. I wonder if any of the old gang will come back. I wouldn't be getting my hopes up, Sadie. You know that once people leave Cave City, Kentucky, they usually need more than a gym dedication to come back. Yeah, I know, but wouldn't it be great to see everyone? I know Babs can't come back. She moved to Chicago and has all those kids. How many kids has she got now? Four or five the last time I talked to her. Can you believe that? Do you remember when she won Miss Mistletoe? I think every girl in the town wanted to be just like her. Mm, I do. She always was a pretty little thing, wasn't she? She was. And she was one of those girls that everybody liked. She was always so good and sweet to everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you remember Sue Ann and Michael Cartwright? We used to come here after school every single day. 
Sue Ann and I would be telling jokes and Babs would be trying to smooth things over and old Michael would be mad at us. I wonder what happened to everyone. I do know that Sue Ann married an older man in Texas and Michael married someone from around here, but I haven't spoken to either of them in years. I do know that their parents moved back about a year ago though, so maybe they will come to the Christmas carnival. Who was that other girl that used to come in here all the time? Jessica Hamilton. Jessie, I always called her. Boy, I haven't seen her since right after high school graduation. Who knows what became of her? She always had such a poor childhood. I was never very nice to her. I think it's because it was pretty plain that Michael liked her best of all. Yeah. I remember how you were as a girl, Sadie, been mean as snot and sassy as a riled up hen. I know, but I've changed now. You have, Sadie. Singing a solo in the church Christmas pageant this year. Why, ever since you've accepted the Lord, you've been getting nicer. Well, thank the Lord for that. People used to get out of the way when I'd walk down the street because they never knew what mean old thing be coming out of my mouth next. But that is all in the past. Yes, ma'am, it is. I'm real proud of you. You know, if I ever get a chance to apologize to Jesse Hamilton, I will. I can't believe it's been over 20 years since I've seen the gang. Do you remember when we were 12 and we were cast in the Christmas pageant? Babs was Mary, of course. Michael was Joseph. I wanted to be the angel, but Sue Ann got that part. And poor Jessie couldn't be in it at all because her family couldn't afford it. Last one in's right next. <laughs> the way Michael Jeffrey Cartwright. Mom told you not to run. Remember your asthma? Hey, Messy Jessie, aren't you coming? I guess we know who the rotten egg is, don't we? At least that explains the smell. Sadie, so lay off, will you? Lay off, will you? Yes, Dad, if you say so. Hey, kids. Is it 3.30 already? Are you all ready for rehearsal? As ready as we'll ever be. Well, good. Is it going to be a good show this year? I don't think we'll be winning any awards, if that's what you mean. Well, the Lord just wants you to do your best. So, let's talk about the Christmas pageant. Let's see. We know Babs will be married because she's the prettiest and she always gets the best part. I do not That means always. Michael will have to play Joseph. I guess I'll be the angel. She can be the shepherd and Jesse. What will Jesse be? I know! One of the pigs in the stable. I have to go. Jesse, please don't go. Just ignore her. She's just teasing. Sadie, be quiet. Jesse, I think you should be in it. They need extra people to sing in the choir. Oh, I don't think so. I don't sing very well. Well, I think you would look really nice in one of those white choir robes with the silver trim. I bet my mom would make you one if you wanted. Oh, I don't think so. That would be too much money, and I'm happy to just watch. Well, I think we should practice before the audition tomorrow. Come on, everybody. Bab, you be married. Michael, you come over here and stand by Bab. Sue, you be the shepherd, and I'll be the angel. Angel? Sadie Benton. You are the last person that ought to play the angel. Everybody knows I'll get the part because I am the smallest and I am not afraid of heights. I could too be an angel. Well, if you try out for the angel part, I'll tell Mrs. Brinks that you're the one who put the whoopee cushion on her chair the night of the pageant last year. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll be the shepherd. Let's practice. Let's see. I'll get Annie Jean's Bible to make sure we get this all right. Babs, it says here you're supposed to be great with child. Act like you're great with child. What does that mean? I think it means you're doing a great job being pregnant. No! It means that you're really big and about to have the baby any minute. Okay, you got that, Mary? Now, Joseph, you need to be all concerned about her and put your arms around her and stuff. So now you go to the inn and knock on the door. Do you have any room in the inn? She is great with child. No! Go find someone to have that baby. We're full. I think that means they wouldn't let Mary have the baby inside. Sadie, I think we should change it and let her have the baby inside the inn. Sue, that's not how the story goes. She has a baby in a barn. Everybody knows that. And she puts the baby in a manager. What's a manager? 
you know, it's one of those cribs on wheels. So you can manage the baby? I see. No, no, no. It's a manger. Well, what's that? I don't know. I always thought it was weird that they had a fancy crib in a barn. A um, manger is like a trough they use to feed the animals. You would know. Oh, come on. Let's get back to the story. So, I've had the baby. Wait, I don't have a baby. Here, use my coat and put in. So, I've had the baby when the angel appears to the shepherd. I am the shepherd, and I am tending to my sheep. Glory to be God on the highest. Today your saver is born. Saver? Like a lifesaver? Well, he is a lifesaver, but the Bible actually says savior, which means that he came to save us all from our sins. How could a baby do that? Well, he grew up. He was God's son, and then when he was a man, he died on the cross to save us from our sins. Mary must have been so sad when he died. I bet he was a beautiful baby. She must have been excited, though, to have a baby as a Christmas present. Well, Sue Ann, there wasn't Christmas until Christ was born. That's why we celebrate Christmas, to celebrate Christ. That's what the pageant, the Christmas pageant, and the Christmas carnival in Cave City is all about. I bet Mary sang to her baby too. Come on! Come on! There isn't anything in the Bible that says they started singing. Listen, kids, I've got to get back to work, but I want you to remember something when you're practicing for your play. Remember that Christ is the first part of Christmas. Of course, Annie Jean. I like the story of baby Jesus and all that, but I don't really get the part about him dying. Have you ever been to Sunday school? I have to go. You have to go now? Yeah, my mom needs me to help her with the laundry. Jessie, wait. I think she left because she doesn't think we like her. Or at least some people don't act like they like her. Michael, we like her. She's just fun to tease is all. But you make fun of her too much, and you always leave her out of stuff. She always takes off like that. How would you feel if someone made fun of you? Well, when I'm a famous movie star, no one will make fun of me because they'll be too busy asking for my autograph. And I'm going to have so much money that everybody will do what I want them to, when I want them to, and in the way I want them to do it. I'm going to see if I can catch up with her and make her feel better. Come on, Sue Ann. Oh, all right. My saint of a brother has to make everything better for poor Miss Jessie. Okay, see you tomorrow, Sue Ann. Sadie, do you really think you'll be a famous movie star someday? <laughs> well, sure. Why not? I watch the movies and it's not that hard. And I can see it now. And the Oscar goes to Miss Lucinda Lancaster. Who's that? Me. That's my stage name. All great actresses change their name. Look at Marilyn Monroe. Do you really think people would look at her the same way if she went by the name Norma Jean Baker? Say, don't you ever want to settle down, get married, and have kids? No way. As soon as I'm old enough, I'm leaving this stinky little town. Our town isn't even big enough to have a stoplight. <laughs> nope. As soon as I turn 18, I'm heading out to Hollywood. I don't care if I have to sleep in a cardboard box. At least I'll be out of Cape City. Someday, Ben, you'll be going to the movies and you'll see me up there larger than life. Lucinda Lancaster! You're weird. What do you want to do, Babs? I want a beautiful white wedding with pink roses and bridesmaids and pink dresses. I want to marry a wonderfully kind man and live in a little white house with flower boxes and a picket fence. We'll have four children and a dog. <sighs> That sounds real nice. I'm sorry, Baz, but don't you think that's kind of lame? You're so pretty and smart. Don't you want to do something actually successful? Maybe. I don't know yet. Look at the time. I gotta go. Okay, see you tomorrow. Sadie, where did everybody go? Did you make them all mad? No. Maybe a couple of them. And what did you do to make them mad? Oh, I don't know. That Jesse Hamilton too says everybody snowed. Michael feels all sorry for her just because she's poor. Sadie, you don't know anything about her home life. 
She's got it rough, and you'll do well to bite your tongue and be a little bit nicer. Well, when I'm a famous movie star, I don't have to be nice to anyone. Sadie Benton, you need to spend more time reading your Bible and going to church and less time with all of those movies of yours. All right, Annie Jean, if you're going to start in on the church talk, I'm leaving. Oh, may I help you? Oh, I sure hope so. I'm looking for my old friend, Lucinda. Lucinda? Well, we went to high school together, but then she went off to Hollywood to become famous. You've never heard of the great Lucinda Lancaster? Barbara Witten, is that <laughs> really you? <laughs> yes, it's me. Oh, Babs, I can't believe you're here. You're really here. Let me look at you. I love your red <laughs> hair. Oh. Sadie, you are a sight for sore eyes. God, how many years has it been? Too many. You look beautiful. Are you here for the carnival? Mm, what else? Now, I got that letter in the mail about the, uh, the new gym, and I almost didn't come, but then my husband said, Honey, you never get a break from me and the kids, so why don't you go home, spend some time in Cave City? <laughs> how many kids do you have? Well, five and a half. Oh my gosh, this really is a celebration. <laughs> so, have you heard from anyone else in the gang? Is anyone else coming back? I haven't heard from anyone. Well, I hope they get here soon if they are coming, because it is snowing so hard out there. I could hardly see a thing when I pulled into the diner. Wait, I have to go get Auntie Jean. <sighs> Will you look at who's here? Can you guess who this is? I don't never forget a pretty face. Hello, darling, how are you? Oh, I'm good, Auntie Jean. It is so good to see you in the diner. I can't hardly believe this place looks just like it did 20 years ago. Well, people seem to like it. They keep coming back for more of my cooking. Oh, can I get you something to eat? How about a nice hot cup of soup? Mm, oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> Oh, Sadie, tell me about what you've been up to. Oh, you know, I keep working here to help out Auntie Jean. I want to move to the city, but I haven't been able to yet. I sing in the church choir, and I teach Sunday school once a month. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's Sadie Benton teaching Sunday school? I. I never thought I'd see that day come. Don't act so surprised. You know that Auntie Jean's been smacking me with her Bible ever since I could toddle in here. Yeah, well, she finally got through to you. It wasn't her. It was the flight attendant. Flight 808 to Atlanta. Wait, what? Flight 808 to Atlanta. Coach class. I ordered a Sprite. He ordered a rum and Coke. But you didn't really need to order, did you? Was I really that blind? No, no, honey. You're not blind. He's just extremely good at hiding things. Whose side are you on? I'm sorry, baby, but she's about to cry. I don't want her to feel worse than she already does. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Now get out of my robe and get out of my house. This isn't your house. This is our house. Let me put this in words you both understand. Welcome aboard, Divorce Airlines, your flight to nowhere. You will soon be receiving divorce papers, stating that you relinquish any rights to this house, to our cars, and to our savings due to your infidelity. You will sign those papers, have them notarized, and return to my attorney immediately. The exits to this house are through the right, through the garage, through the back door, to the backyard, or through the front of the house. You will have exactly five minutes to collect as many personal belongings as possible and put them on your carry-on. Otherwise, I will be forced to throttle you upside the head with a fire extinguisher. And in your case, Flight 808, wrap my fingers around your skinny little neck.
Wow, that, that must have cost you. I know. I know it was a moment of passion, and I'm really lucky that I didn't act on that threat. Besides, if it hadn't have happened, I wouldn't have ended up back here, and Auntie Jean wouldn't have put that Bible in front of me. She kept talking to me about how much the Lord loved me, even though all I could see was the bad in myself. So one night I was praying, and I felt such a peace come over me, and I knew there had to be something special to it. So that Sunday I went to church, and I decided that the only one I wanted controlling my life was Jesus Christ. And from that day forward, I was a changed person. That is wonderful, Sadie. I'm so happy for you. Oh, oh, thank you so much, Andy Jane. So tell me about Chicago. Is it wonderful? Well, it's nice. We live in a suburb, so we're not really in the city. But um, I, I stay home with the kids, and I just love being a mom. So what about your husband? Is he as wonderful as you hoped he would be? Well, he isn't perfect, but I don't think any man is perfect. But he is a, a kind and loving man, and he adores the kids. I, I can't ask for more than that. Wow, you're a mom of five kids. <laughs> I can't believe it. Do you remember when you won Miss Mistletoe? Oh, I'd almost forgotten about that. <laughs> what a fun memory. I remember being so nervous. Why? Everybody knew you would win. I was so jealous. I thought you were going to run off and be a big star. Sadie, I never wanted that. I was always embarrassed by things like that. And people always put too much value on my looks and not enough on you know, who I am as a person. You know, we all lose our looks someday. Then what are you left with? Ho, ho, ho! Michael, Michael Cartwright, and Sue Ann! But, you know, after the first five, I learned you never know what you're expecting. Kids, it's so good to see all of your faces together again. Wow, the whole gang. If I would have known you guys were coming, I would have gotten out of choir practice early to wash my hair. Sadie, <laughs> your hair looks fine. You haven't changed a bit. I just can't believe we're all here. Everyone except Jesse Hamilton. You mean messy Jesse? I hope we're past that, Sue Ann. <laughs> Has anyone heard from her? Not since right after graduation. I doubt she'll come back, though, with the way I treated her. None of us were very good friends to her, Sadie. So, Sue Ann, Michael, tell us about your lives. Well, I live in Connecticut with my adorable husband. Let's just say I got everything I always wanted. Oh, that is gorgeous. Wow, is that real? Mm -hmm. So the last time you and I talked, you lived in Texas, so you've moved to Connecticut. Moved to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Her husband, Robert, is one of the top lawyers in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, being a lawyer's wife leaves little time for relaxing, but the benefits are fantastic. <laughs> oh, Lord, don't get her started on how many bedrooms are in her little cottage in the country. We'll be here all day. <laughs> You just wish you could be there to spend more time with us. Actually, I, it's true. Uh, I live in New York with my two daughters, and um, they just love their Aunt Sue. But lately, I've been thinking about moving back here. I know Mom and Dad miss my two girls, and I miss being in a place that's actually quiet after 8 o'clock at night. I mean, it's so true what they say about New York. It never sleeps. Never. So... Do you know of any property for sale or? <clears throat> Don't seem to matter if it's for sale or not. Somebody keeps buying it. Well, what do you mean, Annie Jean? There's some big development company buying up all of Cave City. Can you believe it? I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. What could they possibly want with us? We're not even near an interstate. Kensington Development is the name of the company. And it started with the corner drugstore and then the movie theater. And before we knew it, they had all of Main Street and the surrounding properties. 
Why would a big company like that want to buy up businesses in Cape City? Some people think it's for a casino, and others think it's so they can put in a shopping mall, but who knows? It's got everyone upset, though, because most of the folks here are either poor or old. Kensington came in and offered them enough money to retire, so they sold. Well, thank goodness they don't have the diner. Could you imagine this place? Anything but Auntie Jean's? <clears throat> Auntie Jean. I know that look. You didn't sell them the diner. You wouldn't. Now, you didn't. Now, Sadie, I haven't yet, but they aren't leaving me much choice. They're going to put in a fancy new restaurant on that lot next door. And with the way taxes keep going up on this place, well, I think I have to do something. I don't know. I think I have to sell now. I don't want to sell, but I'm getting on in years, and I may have to. Annie Jean, if you need a loan to get by, you know I'd do anything to help. We all would. Cannot imagine a cave city without you. I appreciate the offer, but I think it may be time to throw in the towel. Poor Annie Jean. Oh, that makes me so angry. If we just knew what these people wanted with Cave City, we could fight them or go along with it. But since it's a mystery, and every week it seems like there's a new business that's been sold. Oh my goodness, I just realized I'm supposed to be working as a waitress and I haven't asked you if you want anything. Do you want some soup? Yes, sounds great. None for me, thanks. Hey, Babs. <laughs> Remember that year we entered the Christmas Carnival Talent Contest? Oh, you mean, you, you, you mean Blue, Blue, Blue Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I do, I remember. Uh, uh, hey, hey, oh, Blue Christmas without you. Thank you very much. I have a Blue Christmas without you. Hey, baby. I will be due. Girl, you need to sit down before that baby pops out right here. <sighs> has it really been 20 years? Yes, it has been 20 years. Honey, I got the gray hair and crow's feet to prove it. You remember the talent contest? Thank oh, you. I almost forgot. We called ourselves the Holly Sisters and we sang that song in front of the whole town. <laughs> that was the year Babs won Miss Mistletoe. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about that. I remember Michael was our manager and Jessie wanted to be part of the group, but she didn't like to sing in front of people. Listen to me, Deputy Dog. You're gonna kill yourself eating all that bacon. You can't tell me what to do. I'm Deputy Dog, the finest lawman this side of Barney Five. I've got a good mind to hit you over the head with a frying pan. You've got a good mind. I don't got a mind at all. I should listen to my daddy. He told me to marry that garbage man. Well, I should have listened to my daddy. He told me to marry my cousin. <laughs> It just never gets old. You know, I'm gonna miss old Deputy Dog when I head off to college. Seriously, who are we gonna make fun of? I'm sure you'll find someone. I hate to put a damper on this whole Mad TV show, but we really need to rehearse this. Okay, okay, sorry. All right, girls, let's try this from the end. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> How did it look, Michael? Was it okay? Um, are y'all supposed to be doing each move at different times? No. Uh, then you guys better keep at it. I stuck this out of Auntie Jean's. Don't let the others see it though. Hungry? Not at all. But for this, I can always make an exception. Mm. Good stuff. One day, Michael, I will travel the world. I will see strange lands, meet exotic people, and sample all the flavors of the world. But never in all my travels will I ever find anything to tickle my taste buds like this. Well, you're very welcome. 
You're very sweet. How are you coming along? Almost finished. Well, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Hey, why aren't you going to be in the talent contest this year? Um, me? No way. I don't have any talent. Besides, I like watching. It's more fun to dream I'm on stage than to actually be up there. But I've heard you sing. I know you're good. When? The other day after school. You were in the art room with just the radio. You were rocking a little Sophie B. Hawkins. You heard that? Yeah. How embarrassing. You didn't tell anyone, did you? No, no. Of course not. That's all I need for Sadie to find out. She might be just as impressed as I was. With the way she treats me, I doubt that very much. Well, I wanted to ask you something. Yeah? Um, I was wondering, I mean, um, I mean, I was wondering, uh, are you going to the Christmas carnival with anyone? No. Um, well, I was wondering if, uh, maybe you'd maybe like to go with me? Oh, Michael, I don't know what to say. I don't think that's a very good idea. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe some other time, though. Thanks for asking. Any time. Just let me know. Babs, your sash is finished. Oh, you look beautiful. Just like a movie star. You did look just like a movie star. You always have. You've always had that star quality. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta get to work. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome to Auntie Jean's. Can I get you something to drink? Some hot water and lemon. Okay. Now that is star quality. She even smells rich. She has to be from New York or LA or something. Now how do you know she's not just from Cave City? because that kind of class and breeding doesn't come from growing up in Cave City. Now Sue Ann may be classy and all proper now, but she still has a bit of Cave City in her. That lady over there is the real deal. I resent that. I'm ever bit as classy as she is. Oh, ladies, please, does it really matter? <laughs> all right, I gotta go to her hot water and lemon. Auntie Jean? Auntie Jean, where are you? Mara, what's the matter? The mayor asked me to come down here and let everyone know that the roads are closed. The storm hit faster than we expected. The snow plows can't keep up and the wind chill is down to 10 below. Well, they're not canceling the Christmas festivities, are they? The Christmas carnival and pageant have been postponed. The mayor talked to Kevin Belsky at Channel 32, and they said that we could get up to 10 inches tonight. They asked us to let everyone know to stay put. For how long? We don't know. It's okay, kids. Everyone's welcome to stay here as long as we need to. We've got plenty of food, and if it gets bad, I've got blankets somewhere in the back. Is it really that bad out there? Well, you can't see your hand in front of your face. Oh, man. I've got no cell signal. Auntie Jean, can I use your phone? Oh, sure, it's in the kitchen. I know everyone appreciates your hospitality, Auntie Jean. You know, the best thing we can all do is keep warm and pray for it to stop. Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, no, no, honey, no, no, thanks. I have got to get around to those other businesses that are still open. And I gotta check on Stanley and Mrs. Brinks. Did Stanley ever get that nativity scene fixed? No. But you know what's funny? He got it all set up, blinking Jesus and all, and a taxi came rolling into town. Almost crashed into it. And you know he would have if it wasn't for that flashing Jesus. He would have crashed into it for sure. Happy coincidence or miracle? 
Never believed much in coincidences, Sadie. Well, I've got some more stops to make, Auntie Jean. I'll be seeing you. Careful out there, Myra. Well, I guess we'll just have to make our own reunion, won't we? <laughs> kind of sounds like fun. Like one big party. I'd better go look for some candles, just in case we lose power. Sadie, let the lady down there know that anything she wants is on me. Here is your hot water and lemon. Thank you. Due to the unfortunate weather circumstances, anything you want to heat is on the house. No, thank you. I'm fine. Are you in town for the carnival? No, I'm here on business. Okay, well let me know if you need anything. Deputy Dog's wife that was just in here. Yeah, Myra, that's her. And old Stanley is still on the beat. Well, some things never change. <laughs> well, that's how we like it in Cave City. You know that. <laughs> I was trying to call Mom, but the phone lines are down. I hope the girls are okay. So, how old are your girls, Michael? Oh, let's see. Marley is uh, 12, and Maddie turned 7 in January. <laughs> What ever happened to that pretty girl you married from around here? I've been dying to ask. Did you guys get divorced or what? Uh, no, we, we didn't get divorced. Although I think that'd be a little easier story to explain to people. She died three years ago. Cancer. Uh, one day, um, you know, she's happy and healthy and Everything's fine, and then the next day, the doctor's calling and telling you she's sick. Michael, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. It was really hard at first, but we're doing okay now. But, uh, one thing for sure, I'm tired of living in a big city. I want my kids to experience living in a smaller town like Cave City. I think it helped bring us all some peace. I mean, they've just been through so much. We all loved Melanie. She was so thoughtful and fun to be around. We all miss her, Michael. Well, I want to hear about Sue Ann and her rich life. <laughs> what is it like having all the money in the world? Well, um, it's fun to go shopping at all the best stores. I love to travel all over the world. And the stuff, it's pretty great too. <laughs> she has enough stuff to last her a lifetime. They had to buy a new house just to have a place to put it all. I have an idea. Let's go decorate the Christmas tree. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I want to hear from Thad's next. Well, my life really isn't all that exciting. My weekly trips to Walmart are as close as I ever get to a shopping spree. Whew, five kids. I cannot imagine. How old are they? Well, uh, Jeremy, he's, oh, he's gonna be 15 next month. He looks just like his daddy, but he acts just like me. And then there's Amy, she's my strong-headed one, and she reminds me a lot of Sadie when she was a girl. You poor thing. <laughs> Passion, though. And then there's the twins, Rebecca and Rachel. They just turned seven. They had a grand old birthday party. And then there's John. He's four. And I was looking forward to getting him off to kindergarten until I discovered I was expecting again. <laughs> Do you ever get exhausted having all of those kids? No. No, absolutely not. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are days when I feel tired and impatient, but there's nothing better than holding a sweet baby in your arms, watching her fall asleep while she wraps her little hand around your finger, helping them with their science projects, or driving them to the mall, and then sneaking in to see what they're really up to. It's all wonderful. 
And even when I do start to feel overwhelmed, I'm so thankful that I have such a, a meaningful career. Like God has entrusted me with these five lives. It, it amazes me that he thinks I can handle it, but every day I just try to make him proud. I never wanted any kids. My ex-husband was kind of a low life and I always figured if I had any, they'd end up just like him. I think some people are meant to be moms and others aren't. And you might be surprised if you have a child of your own. Sue Ann? You all right? What's the matter? Just a rough time of year. Yeah. It's, it's okay, sis. Her and Rob. It's it's fine. I can I can tell them. Robert and I have been trying to have a baby for several years now, but so far no luck. You've been trying for years. Don't they have fertility drugs or surgeries or other options now? They do. We've tried everything money will buy. In the beginning, I thought maybe we just weren't lucky. And they started doing tests, and we realized it was something more than that. It's such a humiliating process to go through. I mean, all the poking and prodding, and you feel guilty, like there's something wrong with you. And every conversation is about babies or children. And every time the family sees you, it's any news yet. I have this, this emptiness inside of me that will just never go away. I mean, most women my age have kids in their teens by now. these friends at the country club. They sit around and they complain about their kids. Then they look at me and they say, you're so lucky that you never had children. It just, it makes me want to scream. But I don't say anything. Because I couldn't and the thought of them feeling sorry for me. Can't you adopt? Yeah, we have our name on several lists with different agencies. I know this may sound selfish, but I want a baby that's my own. If money could buy that for me, my own child. I'd give away every penny I had. How, how's Robert dealing with all this? I think he gave up a long time ago on us having a child of our own. He works all the time and we never see each other anymore. And when he is home, he doesn't want to talk about it. A few years ago, I paid a decorator to turn one of our bedrooms into a nursery. He keeps telling me to change it back, but I can't. I can't give up on this. I'm 39 years old this year. Time is my enemy. I only have a few years left to even try. And every Christmas, the sorrow grows deeper and the pain is so bad I can barely breathe. And I hear stories about this baby Jesus and think, why? Would a God that is supposed to be good do this to me? The Lord always has his reasons, Sue Ann. 
He doesn't do anything to us. He may not stop circumstances from coming into our lives, but he doesn't cause them. Andy Jean, please, don't start that mushy God talk with me. I know you mean well, but I'm just not a superstitious person. Neither am I. Believing in God isn't superstition. Can we just drop it? I don't want to talk about this or think about it anymore. I just want you to know that if you need to talk, I'm here for you. I know I haven't always been the most tender shoulder to cry on. But I'm getting better in my old age. So, Sadie, whatever happened to becoming a big Hollywood actress? Yeah, where's Lucinda Lancaster these days? She's with all the wannabe actresses, getting tips, being a waitress, and waiting for her big break. <laughs> oh. Well, I just know I always believed you when you told me you were going to make it. Oh, I'm glad one of us did. <laughs> well, tell me you at least tried, right? I did have an audition once. Um, it was kind of with a big name director, too. Who was it? Uh, Joss Whedon. Whedon? Really? Uh, no, wait, no, wait. How do I know? When I call your number, please step forward, say the line, and then make the action you were given before you came in. Number one. Mr. Whedon, I'm your biggest fan. Looking back, I'm kind of glad I didn't get picked. So what else is going on in Cave City? Well, I mean, besides the developer, there probably hasn't been a whole lot that's changed since you've been here. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember the night of graduation? I do. You all came in here after the ceremony with your caps and gowns, and I was so proud of all of you. There were times that I didn't know if you'd make it through high school, especially you, Sadie. Oh! What? I know, Auntie Jean. I'm sorry. I hated school. I just always tried to make it more exciting and maybe got into trouble on occasion. Hey, kids. I just remembered something. I have that old video in the back with some of the movies from your graduation. Do you want to see it? No. Yes. No. Yes. Auntie Jean, I beg you. Oh, come on, Sue Ann. No, I had that awful hairdo that day. We all had bad hair in high school. No, I had mine done right before graduation and it didn't come out right. It was awful. Sue Ann, you are outvoted. Auntie Jean, go get that tape. Get the tape. Get the tape. Get the tape. Forgive me, Sue Ann. We had that wicked storm that night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was almost as bad as this one. That's the night that old Coach Milton got in trouble for all those racial comments he made about Damien Wrighthouse at practice. And you wrote that angry old man letter to the paper about it. <laughs> it made me angry. You know what I didn't appreciate then, but I love now? The prayer. Oh, that was good. I remember. What are we remembering? Lucas Johnson's graduation prayer. I thought the school board banned prayers from graduation that year. They did, but we found a clever little way around that. When Lucas started his address, he faked a sneeze, and we all shouted, God bless you! <laughs> now I remember. I was wondering why he was so blessed that night. <laughs> Is this it? Last chance to spare me this humiliation, Annie Jean. Oh, take it like the rest of us, Sue Ann. <laughs> oh, what? Sue Ann, what were you thinking? <laughs> I told you it was bad. Ha, Eric Dunkirk. He vowed no matter what to live by one motto. Skate or die. <laughs> I'm friends with him on Facebook. No way. Is he still skating? No, he owns a crystals and a golf course in Alabama. Wow, that's so crazy. 
If I had cell service, I'd show you a picture, but wow, he must have trained it in his vans and khakis for polos and visors. It's so weird how some people change. You just never know how somebody's gonna turn out. Speaking of which, there's the long lost member of our tribe. Jesse Hamilton. If there's one person in our class that I wish would have come back for the reunion, it's her. I want to apologize for how I was back then. For what? For what? You guys were complete jerks to her. Okay, not the word I would have chosen. I was a jerk. I was mean and rude and I don't know why I treated her that way. She deserved better and I'd like to tell her that. Do you think that she would believe you? I don't know. After all the wounds we get in high school, they cut pretty deep. Take years to heal. Some never do. I'm sorry, but do I know you? No. You never knew me. You thought you did, but you were too busy trying to impress everybody else to ever really get to know me. Jesse? Jesse Hamilton? I go by Jessica now. Jesse, you've been here this whole time and you haven't said anything. Why? Uh, Jessica? How have you been? Did you come back to see all of us? No. Absolutely not. I'm in town on business. Like I told Sadie earlier, that taxi cab that almost took out baby Jesus was mine. I just came here to drop off a couple of documents. Never expected to run into any of you. I'm glad you did. We all are. Now I can tell you what I wanted. What? You're sorry for every day in high school that you ridiculed me? You're sorry for all the names you called me? Hmm? That what you're gonna apologize for? Look at you. I always thought you were just a little bit prettier than everybody, a little bit smarter. Here you are, waiting tables. In this little small town, you're right where I left you. Who's the poor one now? Jessica. Who don't? I went out and made a name for myself. On my own. Without any help from anybody. And I have enough money now to do whatever I want. And I won't let anybody hurt me like that again. Jessica. Do you ever stop? I have nothing else to say to you. I have something to say to you. I know what I did to you was wrong. You were right. I was jealous of you. I was jealous of everyone. It's because I felt worthless and unimportant. And everyone around me seemed to have their life together except for me. Even you, Jesse. There was just something about you that everybody loved. People weren't nice to you because they felt sorry for you. They were nice to you because they liked you and they wanted you to be their friend. People didn't like me like that. They just put up with what I said because they didn't want to be on the outside. It wasn't just you. And I wasn't the only person that you harassed either. I know. I did. I did because I thought so little of myself. I just wanted people to like me, and if it meant putting down others, then so be it. But I'm not like that anymore. None of us are. You think I have it bad because I'm a waitress? My rock bottom was my divorce settlement that left me with absolutely nothing. That's when I listened to Auntie Jean. That's when it clicked that the one thing I needed was Jesus. I'm not any different now than I was then. The difference is that because I know that Jesus loves me, I can love myself and others. I can't make up for what I did to you, but I've been 
looking for you for years to tell you that I'm sorry and that I would do anything to make it better. Bravo. That was beautiful. I'm sure you rehearsed that maybe a hundred times. Almost makes me want to believe you. Jesse, it wasn't just her. We were all mean to you, and, and we're all so sorry for the things we did back then. Jessica, I know your parents would want to know you're all right. Twenty years is a long time to go without knowing where your daughter's been. Well, they looked all over the country for a Jessica Hamilton, but they never could track you down. Well, they wouldn't be able to. I changed my name. Nobody finds me now unless I want them to. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to. Andy Jean, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Oh, we know. The carnival's been postponed. We're in worse shape than that. The state's declared a state of emergency. We're under curfew. And no one is to go out until the all clear has been given. And how long will that be? I can't say. The weather radar is showing we're right underneath the heart of this storm. We could get up to two feet when all's said and done. <sighs> Poor mom. Stuck with the girls all night. I knew I should have written down that dragon story. Mr. Mayor, I had a cab outside. <laughs> if there was a cab, he's long gone now. Hopefully someplace safe. Are you sure? Because I really need to get out of here. I'm sorry, Miss Kensington. I'm afraid that's not going to happen tonight. Kensington? Your last name is Kensington. You're Kensington Development? I'm Jessica Kensington. Kensington Development is one of many companies I own and operate. Is that the name we've been seeing on all the buildings around here? That's correct. Matter of fact, she's given us a very generous offer on the town hall down in the square. Enough that we can finally get the pool and splash park built in the East End like we've been talking. I'm sorry, am I missing something? Do you all know each other? I thought we did. Jesse, what are you doing? What do you want with Cave City? What better way to prove my success than to invest in Cave City? But you're not investing. You're putting me and all of my friends out of business. Why would you want to do that? I wouldn't put it that way, Auntie Jean. I've paid your friends rather well for their businesses. And with the money that I intend to offer you, you can finally retire to Florida like we first talked about on the phone. What about all those empty buildings? What do you plan to do with those properties? I don't know. I may renovate some of them and turn them into higher priced trendy boutiques. Or I might tear them down, create an open air mall. Or I may create a green space. Whatever I decide to do, this could become a very profitable business corridor. Jesse, what happened to you? You're so bitter. Says the man who still refers to the sheriff's deputy as deputy dog. But no, Michael, you're right. We've all changed. You guys have your small town family lives here, your happy places, and I have mine too. So trust me when I say this is not personal. It's just business. Speaking of which, Auntie Jean, I want you to take a look at this. This is my final offer to you. Now, I know that you own this place outright. There's no lien on this property, and I can't force you to sell. But you have to consider, whatever I decide to do with Cave City, you could find yourself left with nothing. Thank you, Miss Kensington. I'll give this a good look. Well, this is going down as one of the worst carnival weekends ever. Mr. Mayor, would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, I'll take a big one. Thank you. You're welcome. Myra? Fine, Sadie. We're gonna be here all night. There's no sense in us fighting the whole time.
Okay, if no one else is brave enough, I'll address the two-ton elephant in the room. And what's that? What is this dragon story? This isn't the time. Michael, it is so cute. What is it? It's nothing. It's this bedtime story I made up for the girls. It's this silly little thing to make them laugh and maybe teach them some good manners. I want to hear it. Oh, me too. No. Come on, Michael. I'm not feeling it. We're going to be here all night. I want a good bedtime story. Sadie. Son. I know you don't live here anymore, but as mayor of Cave City, the city charter gives me executive authority to call on citizens in time of crisis. Now, if you want to stay in this warm, cozy diner for the duration of this storm, you're going to have to make with the story. Once upon a time in a faraway kingdom, there lived a very rude dragon. This dragon had no manners and made a lot of people very unhappy. When this dragon wanted something, he never said please. He would just take what he wanted right out of your hand without even a thank you. Worst of all, when this dragon sneezed, he never covered his mouth. <coughs> he would just shoot fire out of his nose, setting the whole village on fire. <laughs> One day, the princess decided that she was going to teach the dragon to be polite. Everyone thought she was crazy, but the princess believed that anyone could learn manners if they tried. So the princess went to the dragon's cave. Hello, dragon, said the princess. <laughs> the dragon just growled. The princess just smiled and pulled out a candy bar. And when the dragon saw the candy bar, he tried to snatch it from the princess, but she was too fast, pulled the candy bar back and said, Mr. Dragon, when we want something, we say please. <laughs> But the dragon just growled and tried to grab it again, but the princess stood her ground. Say please, Mr. Dragon. Dragon pouted and said, please. The princess gave him the candy bar and he finally started to unwrap the candy bar and the princess put her hand on his little paw and said, Mr. Dragon, when someone does something nice for us, we always say thank you. The dragon looked at the princess and said again, thank you. You're welcome, said the princess. The princess ran off to let the dragon enjoy his candy bar. <laughs> the princess was so excited that the dragon had finally learned his manners. She ran back to the kingdom to brag on the dragon, but no one believed her. So the princess invited the dragon to the town square and everyone thought for sure the dragon would be rude and snatch the candy bar from the princess. But when the princess pulled out the candy bar, the dragon smiled and said, please princess. And the princess smiled and gave him the candy bar and the dragon said, thank you. Mm. That's so good. <laughs> the, the whole town was so excited and proud of the dragon for learning his manners. People were dancing and rejoicing in the streets. One little girl came over to the dragon and gave him some wildflowers. But when the dragon started to sniff the wildflowers, it made his nose itch. Oh. Uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, not so fast, said, <laughs> said the princess. When we sneeze, we use manners too. The princess held up her arm and covered her nose and mouth and said, Mr. Dragon, when we sneeze, we always cover our mouth and nose and sneeze into our arms so we don't spread our germs. 
dragon just smiled and nodded and covered his big nose with his little bitty arm and with a mighty sneeze, a true boom fire shot out of that dragon's nose and, and caught his little arm on fire. <laughs> the dragon, oh, 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 screamed the dragon as he tried to put his arm out. But the more he blew, the more the flame spread, setting the entire village on fire again. <laughs> so if you ever visit the kingdom of the polite dragon, you are going to find the most polite dragon in the entire world. When somebody wants something, he always says, please. And when someone does something nice for him, he always says, thank you. He's even learned how to say, excuse me, when he bumps into someone. But if the dragon ever starts to sneeze, you better run for the hills because there are just some things you cannot teach a dragon. <laughs>
Years ago, you made quite a claim about that pie. Are you familiar with Miss... Michael, I'm not in the mood. Come on, we're all a little stressed about the weather. It's just a little comfort food to help ease that stress. Michael, I... You're gonna tell me that after all these years, you can look at that pie and not take a bite? I can't say I haven't had better, but it's Auntie Jean's pie. Some reunions aren't as bad as others, I guess. Michael, it really is good to see you. It's good to see you too, Jesse. I've missed you over the years. You're always my best friend. One of the things I've always loved about you is how you care about other people. Happened to you? I already told you this is not personal. Then why Cave City? Why not Henrysville or Sparksburg? Because I know Cave City. And I saw that Mr. Lander had a store for sale and I put two and two together. So this isn't a vendetta or there's no revenge factor? Maybe a little. Can you blame me though? I left here dirt poor in the town joke. Now who's laughing? Yeah, who's laughing? You can't tell me you're happy. Why not? I have everything I've always wanted. But for how long, Jesse? Nothing lasts forever. Especially not the things we thought we wanted. I had a wonderful wife and kids, a beautiful family. And now I'm a single father. It tore my heart in two to watch the woman I love battle with cancer and lose. But thank God, thank God, my happiness was not tied to what I wanted. really sorry that happened to you. If there's anybody in this town that I would want to be happy, it's you. Jesse, I, I wouldn't trade those years for anything. Anything. But I'll take the joy with the heartache. Not only because she gave me two wonderful girls. But she made me the man I am today. We're not the same as we were 20 years ago, Jesse. We've all changed in, our, in different ways. I wish you could see that. I wish I could too. It's gonna take a lot more than pretty speeches and apologies. for man or beast. Caroline, are you okay? What's Jean, going on? is that you? Oh my goodness. Yes, Caroline. When did you get so old? Oh, Stanley. Really? I got my head. Stanley. Stanley. Hey, Stanley. Okay. Hey, somebody call. Somebody needs to call back. I've got a bar. I've got a bar. I've got a bar. I've got a pulse. Yes, I'm at Auntie Jean's diner in Cave City, Kentucky. A man appears to have had a heart attack. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, th thank you. Stanley, thank you. Wake up, okay? Come back okay, okay, there, there. Stay with Ambulance is on the way. How long will it be? 15 or 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, I'll be here, Myra. It's a good thing they got here when they did. A few more minutes and we might have lost him. He's going to live? God willing. But I'm afraid he's had his last bacon and mayo sandwich. Small price to pay. <laughs> How about Mrs. Brinks? Oh, I wouldn't worry about her. 
If worse comes to worse, she might just be a kinder, gentler version of her old self. <laughs> it's a shame she's going to have to miss the carnival, though. Oh, we'll get her down there tomorrow. She may not remember, but we'll take some pictures. So we are still going to have the carnival? We are. We're losing a day, though. I'd extend it to Monday night if I could, but the forecast is calling for even more snow next week. Well, it's a shame I put in all that practice and I won't get to do my song. What a shame. Not necessarily. I think we could all use a little bit of Christmas cheer about now. Mm. You want me to sing? If you want to. No ifs. I, I, say, I did my dragon story. You are definitely singing. Mm -hmm. Don't make me threaten mayoral action, Sadie. The storm's over, Mr. Mayor. Yes, and I'm not lifting the emergency order until you sing. I'll tell you what. You sing a few lines, and then I'll join in. How's that? Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round young virgin, mother and child, Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Mr. Mayor Sadie, that was beautiful. I never thought about the Lord loving me like that. I guess I never really took the time to think about the Lord at all. I always thought he was just up there in the sky somewhere and he didn't really have time for me. Even with all the money and the stuff in the world, I still feel like something's missing. I used to think it was having a baby of my own, but now I think it's something more than that. I think we all have an empty place in our heart when we haven't accepted the Lord. I know I didn't know Sadie Benton until I accepted that I was his child. And now he's not just my father, he's my daddy. And because of that, I have so much joy in my life. Even in this little diner, in this little town, in the middle of nowhere. Well, with that performance concluded, I hereby declare the emergency curfew over. <laughs> you are all free to leave and return to your homes or places of lodging, if you can dig out. <laughs> Miss Kensington, if you can't get a cab, I'll be happy to give you a lift. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do you want to conduct a little business first? Lead the way. Now, where did I put that pen? Gina, you need some more time to think this over. If I needed more time, I'd ask for it, but oh, this is more than generous. It will allow me the chance to get off my feet for once and enjoy life outside. I know that I came on really strong earlier and I just, uh, I was kind of a bully. And I don't want you to feel forced. Jessica, is this what you want? Congratulations, Auntie Jean. Congratulations to you too, part owner. What? I had to work the contract. I don't want to own Auntie Jeans, and I don't want to own Cave City. I created a new agreement so that Auntie Jean can retire like she's wanted to do for so. And 
If you'll step into her shoes, it would make you part owner. If that's okay with you. I'm okay with it, but why? Sadie, I didn't believe a word you said earlier. And I am so sorry. <laughs> when I saw how you helped Stanley, all of you, the way that you helped him, I knew you meant it. And I should have never said those hurtful things that I said to you. I'm willing to forgive and forget if you will. you. I am sorry for lying. About what? There is not a dessert or a pie or a cake in the world that is as good as Auntie Jean's apple pie. <laughs> I'm guessing the deal for Town Hall is off? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to set up offices here, and I would be more than happy to donate towards having the pool dug, if that's okay with you. What, what are you going to do with the other properties you acquired? I don't know. I'm going to have some time to think about it, though, because I plan on being here a lot more often. Welcome home, Jesse. Thank you. Amen to that. Old friends reunite, old wounds are healed. And we're getting a swimming pool for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we need a snow plow. <laughs> <laughs> The kind of miracle that only God can do. But I will do my best to send a little hope to you. This year I'm sending you hope for Christmas. I'm sure that it's something you can use to light up the darkness right there where. Cover all the loss your life has been full of. 
long ago and not so far away A hope was born to us on a Christmas day And though the winds of change may blow our worlds apart It can never steal the hope that lives within I'm sure that it's something you can use To light up the darkness right there where you are It's hope that will make your day look brighter And hope that will make your love feel lighter And hope that will mend your heart and dry your tears It may not seem like much but Change by his love.